Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Well, today's video is going to be just a fun video. Sometimes in August in Ohio, we get nice cool days and really cool evenings, and we've had a week of that, and it's just been beautiful outside. So stay tuned. First thing I want to show you is the Vortex Green Beans. A couple videos back, these guys were just little tiny plants when I put them in the Beto buckets. Now they train themselves up all, the Beto bobbin, and look at they're all the way up top of the wire, almost to the roof of the greenhouse. And the best thing is, they're producing beans. Look at these little baby ones. They'll be ready to harvest in about a week. And Vortex, it's a green bean that gets about 11 inches long. It doesn't have a string in it, and it is so sweet. It's one of my favorite snacks to eat when I'm working in the greenhouse. But the way these plants look like they're going to produce, I should have a really good harvest for my farm market in another week. And then after that, I'm going to put a bunch of these up for me for the winter time. So everything looks like it's doing good. So come on, let's head outside. Well, I'm in the high tunnel. It's a beautiful, cool August morning. Earlier this today, it was a little bit rainy out and kind of stopped and the sun's coming out. So I figured I better get back out here because yesterday I was working on my strawberries and picking them and ran out of daylight because I noticed my plum tomatoes, there's quite a few ripe ones I need to get off the bushes. The other day I picked 10 ripe tomatoes and today it looks like I maybe have 20 to 30 ripe ones, but still not enough for me to get my big grinder out to do the processing of canning spaghetti sauce. So I'm gonna do something different today. I'm gonna to get these all off the bushes, the vines, and take them up to the kitchen, and I'm gonna make some sun-dried tomatoes. The cultivar I'm growing is Amish Paste. I grew them last year, and I had really nice, meaty tomatoes. But this year, since I have them on the strawberry formula, they're not quite as big, but it doesn't matter because these are just for us. When the plants started producing, I was hoping all the tomatoes would get ripe all at once, you know, come ready all at once. Well, that's not happening. So hoping taking off the ripe ones, it'll st still keep producing. So I may be making sauces in stages this year. I'm going to go through each plant and take every tomato off that has some color. Great day to be up in the kitchen, nice and cool out. So look at the haul I got, way more than I thought I was going to get. I could get the processor out and do the whole thing and can some sauce, but I just don't feel like cleaning it up. So I'm still going to stick with my original plan of making some sun-dried tomatoes. One of my favorite dishes that we like to make in the wintertime is Marry Me Chicken. If you guys have ever tried it, oh, you know how good it is. And if you haven't, there's a bunch of recipes online. It's really super easy to make, but it calls for sun-dried tomatoes. And if you've gone to the store, you know how expensive they are. And I just feel like I want to make all these so I have them all ready for the winter time and we can have a bunch of nice different dishes to eat and nothing better than sun-dried tomatoes in the winter. Before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and preheat the oven to 200 degrees. Okay, I've got that going, so now I'm going to wash the tomatoes. I still like to wash off the tomatoes, even though these are my tomatoes, I grow them and I know there's no sprays on them. There's still dust and pollen in the air, so I just like to give them a good rinse.
Before I start the process of cutting up the tomatoes, I have two cookie sheets ready and I'm going to line them with parchment paper so they can go in the oven. So this part's really simple. Take the tomato, cut off the green part, and cut them long ways. All the recipes I've read about sun-dried tomatoes don't say anything about taking out the seeds. Well, I'm not a seed person. I really don't like seeds in my food. So I'm going to go ahead and take my thumb and get the seeds out of each one of these halves. So as I'm cleaning out the seeds, you want to make sure you put the tomatoes skin side down on the cookie sheet. Now I'm ready to put salt and pepper on the tomatoes before I pop them into the oven. And like I said, the oven's at 200 degrees. I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle them with the salt and then I'm going to go back over with the pepper. Got them popped in the convection oven at 200 degrees. You know, the convection blows the air around, so they're going to dry out really nicely. But I still think it's going to take between 8 and 10 hours. And the nice thing is I'm not going to have to worry about rotating the cookie sheets between the racks because the, be, the heat is going to be even all around them. Well, I'll see you guys in about 10 hours. And at that time, we'll get them jarred up if they're all dried out. Hey guys, well it's been 10 hours with a few more added. I ended up turning off the tomatoes and putting them in the fridge and went to bed. Got up this morning, put them back on. So total 10 hours of cooking time. So now they're ready to get out of the oven. Okay. When I put them back in the oven this morning, I was able to condense them down to one cookie sheet. So it looks like I'm going to have two half pint jars. So before I put the tomatoes in, I'm going to go ahead and put a few peppercorns in for flavor and some micro basil I grew back in the greenhouse. It's just amazing. Well, I'm going to put half the tray into each jar. Just put them in nice and easy. This is exciting. Looks like I have enough for three jars. Try to push as many as I can in each jar. And then I'm going to top it off with the olive oil. Okay, three jars filled. So now that I have all the jars stuffed with the tomatoes, I'm going to go ahead and pour the olive oil on top. And I was going to use my rings and lids, but I have these reusable lids that I made by Ball because I'm not going to can the tomatoes. I'm just going to keep them in the fridge. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the lid on and it's ready to go in the refrigerator. I'm so surprised I got three jars out of that amount of tomatoes, but I don't think three jars is going to hold me through the fall and winter for our cooking. So I went out this morning and picked a few more plum tomatoes. Some of them aren't quite ripe yet. So once these guys ripen up, I'm going to go ahead and dry them just like I did these. And hopefully I'll get two more jars because I think five jars will get us through the fall and winter. Well, I hope you guys liked today's video. And like always, please leave me any questions, comments, and suggestions down below. And we'll see you next time.